What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again once again and today people, today, we're in my absolute favorite time of Destiny content releases, between the DLCs, and I mean that unironically. The honeymoon phase is over, the hype has died down, and people actually start talking about the game a little more honestly. Now whether you agree with it or not is an entirely different point, like this take from Paul Tassi about, do we really need weapon crafting? I mean, I was saying that six months ago and got lambasted, but hey, now we can have a conversation about it. We're not doing that today, though. This is merely set up to explain that we are finally in the time period where we can talk shit about Destiny. Not that that's stopped me in the past, but it does seem like there's more acceptable times to do it than others. And that's between the content releases, when people are hungry, they're bored. Destiny drama reaches a fever pitch. The community starts eating itself alive, or... For the topic of today's video, molding over weapons and loot that they're just not good enough to get. The Destiny community has this weird entitlement when it comes to hard endgame content. People who want hard and engaging endgame content, and people who want participation trophies for, I don't know, downloading and buying the game. It's this weirdly stupid entitled mentality. It's the sort of thing that you can tell people are bored with Destiny, and then they suddenly remember that there's this endgame loot that they can't get. So instead of getting good and deciding to fail and fail and try and fail and try and fail over and over and over, until they achieve something. Instead, they go, hmm, what if I complained about it on the internet? Which, hey, I mean, mad props. I'm not judging anyone for that. But it's also kind of silly because Destiny is one of the most casual friendly games out there. 99.9% .9 of the game can be done with your brain turned off. And yet people are mad that there's a handful of loot that is air quote, gate kept behind hard content. And instead of them putting in the time and effort to get better, they want the game made easier. Now, this is nothing new to Destiny or new to gaming in general. All you have to do is look at the conversation around the Soulsborne games and the demand to make the games easier when really the games are just not for those people. A game that's not for everyone isn't a game that should be made in my opinion. At the end of the day, go kill yourself, man. Oh, dear Lord God, know why these types of people moving forward. And that's okay. Sometimes a game, a mode, or a reward just isn't for you. A game that's not for everyone isn't a game that should be made, in my opinion. At the end of the day, go kill yourself, man. Now, the reality of the situation when it comes to Destiny is that was an adept and they were a scrub. Could it be any more obvious? It is laughable. Sorry, not sorry. You're not entitled to adept weapons or endgame gear because you showed up. But do you know what you are entitled to, ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages? A safe and secure internet browsing experience at home or on the go. And that is precisely where the sponsor of today's video comes in, NordVPN. You guys must really like NordVPN, because every time my contract comes up, they're like, hey Joker, want to do it again? And it's not hard to see why you seem to like NordVPN. With amazing features like gaining access to Geolock content, I don't know about you guys, but I am getting sick and tired of all these streaming services you have to sign up for. It's getting as bad as cable. But what's even worse is when you're subscribed to a service that has a show, but it doesn't have that show in your country. So you have one of two options. Either sign up for another streaming service or use NordVPN. Change your location and gain access to all sorts of multimedia across the world. And this isn't just for streaming services. You can gain access to games that may not be released in your region yet. On top of that, NordVPN offers super fast servers in over 60 countries, a strict no data logging policy, 24 seven customer support via live chat and email, double data encryption for increased anonymity. It works in China. And if for some reason, you don't like NordVPN? They offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Oh, and um, now NordVPN is getting better than ever. Take your cybersecurity to the next level with threat protection. The new feature protects you from malware, trackers, and ads, even if you're not connected to a VPN server. But Joker, VPNs are expensive! Haha, -ha, not today, oh contrarian commenter of contrarian comments. Users can use the link in the description below, nordvpn.com slash buttjoker, to get a two-year plan with a huge discount, plus one additional month for free. And with that, I would like to thank NordVPN for their continued sponsorship of the channel. Now back to our show. So what is it with the Destiny community's obsession with not actually wanting to play hard content, but get the loot from it like it was a participation trophy? 
and whining when the aforementioned loot is locked behind hard content. Quote, adept weapons and loot should not be gatekept behind hard content. Cosmetics should instead. Now, this sentiment has been around basically as long as Destiny's been a game. This isn't some cherry-picked opinion dredged up from the deep web, suddenly bursting on the scene so I could make a sponsored video, as I'm sure I'll be accused of. Now, this is quite literally the problem tons of people have with things like Trials of Osiris or GM Nightfall. It's one of the reasons, not the reason, but one of the reasons we no longer get weapons like Luna's Hal and not forgotten, because people can't be expected to climb to 2200 in comp, which I always found funny because I know people with like a 0.7 KD who are triple gilded unbrokens, they just play the game. Let me ask, for the sake of argument, do these people not remember Destiny 2 Year 1? Let's get in the Wayback Machine. Destiny 2 was not in a great place. It was hemorrhaging players by the day. However, there was a shining beacon on a hill, and that beacon was Leviathan Hard Mode. And then Leviathan Hard Mode released. And I remember my exact reaction to finding out that there were only cosmetic rewards. Aw oh, yeah, time to get some epic prestige raid weapons. You know there's no prestige mode raid weapons, right? What? Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Nope. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Alright then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm out. God, I was so cringe back then. Eh, who am I kidding? I still am. One of the greatest downfalls of Destiny's competitive playlist was the removal of weapons like Luna's Hell and Not Forgotten and Mountaintop and Recluse. Weapons that were strong and great in virtually every piece of content, but the casuals. Actually, no, not the casuals. Casual is not synonymous with being bad. Not all casuals, not even most, are bad players. And yet we seem to call bad players casual players because it's more polite or something. No, they're just bad. You can have 40 hours in a game and be amazing. You can have 4,000 hours in a game and suck ass. And let's be real, let's be honest, let's be real honest. It's often the latter, not the former. Asking for Destiny content to be made easier. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with being a bad player. I'm certainly not the greatest Destiny player in the world that has ever or will ever exist. And no, I'm clearly not talking about people who have physical or mental limitations that impair their capacity to interact with Destiny in the same way that an average player would be able to. But I also have a sneaking suspicion these groups of people are not the same people running around bitching about how things are unfair and how the game needs to be made easier to cater to them. I think these are the type of people who want accessibility features and treated like everybody else. No, I'm basically talking about the entitled bad gamer who wants to ruin the game for everybody else because they can't be bothered to put in the effort to get better, even though there's nothing stopping them from doing that other than not wanting to. And yes, that encompasses PvP as well. There is ways to get better at PvP without just demanding that PvP is dumbed down and all the rewards are handed to you. And I find when most people are bad at PvP, it comes down to three things, honestly. They don't understand the meta, or they don't want to play by the meta, which, fine, fair enough, but know what you're getting into. They don't understand positioning, and mostly, I'm guilty of this, they run in. They lack patience and discipline. Recently, I made a video talking about Final Fantasy XIV's new multiplayer mode. And one of the takeaways I had in that video is, I understand that I'm just learning this game. So I understand that I have to put in the time and effort to not just play the game, that's mechanical, but also go online and look up tutorials for my class or other classes. Don't get me wrong, the mechanical part of the game is important, but not as important as understanding why you're doing something, why you need to do X, Y, or Z, or why when you do X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z happen in return. And I just find a staggering amount of people are not willing to take an hour or two to sit down and research the fundamentals of the game. Now it should be noted before all the But Joker Andes go off in the comment section. There's a huge difference between not liking a mechanic or saying X, Y, and Z activity is only difficult because it's artificially difficult. But that's an actual argument. That's a breakdown of mechanics. That's not crying because you couldn't get free loot. That's not asking for something to be easier, that's asking for the mechanics to be more refined. Destiny needs aspirational content. Why would anyone care about doing hard mode content if the rewards weren't worth the time of day? 
This is why nobody plays comp. There's just no rewards for doing so. This is why the hard mode Leviathan raid wasn't worth most people's time. This is why most endgame content, like raids and dungeons even, stagnate and die off. Because nobody wants to waste their time playing hard content if the rewards are not there. And by turning rewards into participation trophies, and by turning rewards into participation trophies and replacing them with cosmetics, all you've really done is devalue the point of playing hard endgame content. Sure, some people will want to get a sparrow, a ship, or a shader. But that doesn't have the same incentive to keep replaying content as a god-rolled adept weapon. Because here's what happens. People get what they want, and they stop playing content, and that content dies. Don't believe me? Well, here's kind of an expert on it. If the shiny weapons didn't exist, I know an overwhelming number of people who would never even bother to step foot into the Thunderdome. This is just what makes sense. People follow rewards. It's common sense. So, here's how it used to work with me. The day that I got my last piece of best in slot gear, I was gone. I never came- the next Tuesday? Where's Asmon? Well, he got his neck last week. Yeah, well, where is he this week? You didn't hear me. He got his neck last week. So, is he just not coming anymore? Yeah, that's right. He's doing Battlegrounds right now. Oh, no, never mind. He's standing in Sormon, taking pictures of people taking pictures next to their character for his ego. Yeah, we'll see him back next patch. And that's it. And that's it, I was gone. When you dumb down content, when you do not have exclusive high-end PvE and PvP rewards for people to grind out, all you're doing is speeding up the death of any piece of content. Playing a raid once, twice, three times, four times, five times even, it's fun. Playing it a hundred times, 500 times, that's not, that's a chore. It doesn't make sense to play some of the hardest content in the game for lackluster rewards. And yes, I know, there will be some people who are just okay with cosmetics. However, here's the thing that I think a lot of people don't consider when they think about cosmetics. Cosmetics are extremely subjective. Look no further than the recent contest between Team Monster and Team Mech. Do you honestly believe that the people who think that the Team Mech rewards are ugly are going to spend money on them? No. The same issue applies to endgame cosmetics. If somebody thinks they're ugly, why would they waste the time and effort to get them? However, on the flip side, you can have a weapon that looks like shit. If it melts in PvE and PvP, the people in the camp of Ew, it's ugly, I don't want it, are going to be far and few between compared to the people in the camp of Yeah, it's ugly, but it's also OP. And this is the difference when it comes to reward-based incentives. Cosmetics are just not good enough. And I know I'm rambling and yelling into the wind on this one. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. But above all else, stay frosty.